morning. And good morning from Trinity Lutheran Greencastle. My name is Scott Ballantyne, and I'm one of the assisting ministers here at Trinity. Welcome to worship on this Sunday where we affirm our own baptism and recognize the baptism of our Lord. We are now in the season of Epiphany, the season of light. Epiphany means to reveal. We are listening to scripture that reveals who Jesus is and how we are called to respond. We gather in person and online. The COVID numbers for Franklin County are high and hospitals and doctor's offices are overrun. Council is strongly recommending masks for everyone to protect our faith family. This section over here, masks are required as well as social distancing. The bulletin is on the website, tlcgreencastle.org, click news and events, then bulletin. Those in the sanctuary received prepackaged communion kits. Those of you joining us online, please find a slice of bread and a cup of juice or wine for communion. If that isn't possible, know that your desire for union with Jesus is Holy Communion. You may also want to bring a small uh, dish of water for when we affirm our baptism. If you're in the sanctuary, please use the form that was in the, in the bulletin to share your God moments. If you're joining us on Facebook, please use the comments to say hello, write your God moments, mention something that inspires you from the service, and share the peace. Please see the announcement sheet for the food the food pantry needs this week. Uh, we also have an announcement now by Matt. Good morning. Uh, as you may have read in the newsletter and in the bulletin, um, this council will be signing a letter of agreement with Pastor Denise Horn to be our interim pastor as we begin the call process for a new pastor. Um, many of you may know Pastor Denise. Uh, she's the pastor at uh, Salem Lutheran up here in Marion. And she's married to Pastor Martin Horn, who's the pastor at e Evangelical here in Greencastle. Uh, she's been to several of the youth events and stuff, so I'm sure a lot of you have met her before. Um, she comes to us uh, with a lot of experience because she's been an interim pastor before, so we look forward to welcoming her here. And uh, she should be starting here at the beginning of February. Thank you. Now I invite you to put your feet on the floor and take a deep breath. Let go of any distractions and put your cares and concerns at the foot of the cross. Notice God noticing us. We'll begin with the call to worship. Good morning. We are beginning to learn a new song this morning. I hope you'll find it easy to learn this along with us as we declare that our God is able to do anything. Nothing is too difficult for him out of Jeremiah 32, 17. Oh, boy. 
please stand if you are able. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Our gathering hymn is Holy Spirit. The words are on the screen and in the bulletin. together. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace, your gift of unconditional love and forgiveness, and transform us by your spirit, that we may follow after your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his granary, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized, he was praying, and heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated.
grace to you and peace from God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Baptism. That's quite a short word, but quite a powerful word. For me, it brings back some personal and maybe some long-forgotten memories. But as I thought about the whole scripture lesson this week, some things came back to my mind. I'd like to share some of that with you. I was baptized when I was three years old, which is a little unusual, especially in the Lutheran faith. Usually it's babies that are baptized. And that's a long story, but I won't get into that. But what I do remember is I do have a faint re recollection of what happened that day. And I remember my father and mother being there and my sister and an aunt and uncle and a lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people. Um, it was a Palm Sunday um, in March, and it was in a church in the nave, and there was quite a lot of people. And all I, I didn't think of the time, but there was all these people there wanting to see me baptized. And that's, that's meant quite a lot to me over the years. And then many years later, when I was working in a chaplain's office in a hospital, I remember being called to a hospital room. And that was a much smaller gathering. I was just a newborn and a newborn mother and father and a nurse. And I was asked to baptize this time because the doctor had recommended that we baptize. They weren't expecting the child to, li to live even a week. But as far as I know, the child did live that week and for all I know, is now 27 years old. But I remember doing that and being there and being part of that. Then, of course, there's my years of being a Sunday school teacher. And you're always, on this day, trying to remember baptisms with the children in your class. And depending on how old they are, there might even be a time where you go over the small catechism and you listen to Martin Luther and what Martin Luther had to say about baptism and his famous line, what does this mean? Well, here are some thoughts about what Martin Luther taught us about baptism. Baptism is not simply water. Instead, it is water used according to God's command and connected with God's word. It brings about forgiveness of sin redeems from death and the devil, and gives eternal salvation to all who believe, as the word and promise of God declare. Clearly the water does not do it. But the word of God, which is with and alongside the water, and faith, which trusts this word of God in the water. For without the word of God, the water is just plain water, and not a baptism. But the word of God is in the baptism. That is a grace-filled water of life and a bath of new birth in the Holy Spirit. It signifies that the old person in us and all the sins and evil desires is to be drowned and die through daily sorrow for sin and through repentance. And on the other hand, that daily a new person is to come forth and rise up to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. So, of course, another memory is that, which happens to be my fate sometimes, I'm asked to preach to you on a Sunday where we commemorate the same thing every year. As you recall, I preached about Thomas. Well, now I get to do the baptism of Jesus, which is something we think about and it occurs to us every year about this same time. So this time, it's Luke's turn to remind us of the baptism of the Lord. And I'd like to reread some of the gospel. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I'm not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. 
he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Now, when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized, and he was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. In you I am well pleased. Well, we're very familiar with how the Gospel writer John gets almost all the credit for being poetic and his imagery in his scripture reading. But this time, Luke gives us a little bit of his, his own right, comes back. Jesus will baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. Well, we hear that combination again later. Holy Spirit and fire. Well, that sounds like the day of Pentecost. Our ascended Lord pours out the Holy Spirit on each church, and the tongues of fire rest on each person, and then the Spirit empowers each to witness. That's quite a powerful image, I believe. And then the heaven was opened, and the Holy, Holy Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Heaven, dove, water. Well, that sounds like the story of Noah and what happened after the flood. And here was a new creation that Noah was part of. And once again, heaven was open, there was a dove, and there was water. But Jesus now is here to do his new creation, and that's us. A third example, then as a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved, with you I am well pleased. How mysterious and curious is this thought, when later the father will forsake his beloved son as he is hanging on the cross, a cross that will stare up. Well, this, indeed, is very similar to Abraham and Isaac, when Abraham's told to go sacrifice Isaac, his beloved son. But just as Isaac was spared, we too will be spared. Because remember, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God so loved the world. God loves us. So in the course of my readings this week, I came across a a letter written by the late Sharon Barker, and I'd like to conclude this time with her words. I think they're very appropriate for today. We should never take our baptism for granted. In water and the word, God acts in our lives, adopting us and incorporating us into a family. In that instant, once and for all, Something wonderful happens and will always happen in our lives, even if we are too young or too spiritually immature to know. In the instant of baptism, we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and promise that the Spirit walks with us into eternity. Talk about a gift that keeps on giving. That is why, dear friends, we should make a point out of remembering and celebrating not only Jesus' baptism, but our own encounter with water and word. Baptism is well to remember, but better to live it, really live it, by walking each day in the knowledge of just how powerful word, water, bread, and wine really are when Jesus is involved. This world can be a pretty tough place, and she wrote this well before the year 2000. <laughs> this world can be a pretty tough place, and there are distractions aplenty, but our Lord has set the example, and by the Holy Spirit is actively shaping and molding us for mission and ministry. So let this day be a joyous celebration of water and meal, of hope and love, and of equipping one another to go out and live as the baptized and beloved who tell all the world what God is doing. Amen.
It is usual on this day for the congregation to affirm their own baptism. So we would like to do that now. If you'll follow along in the bulletin. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism as we come before God to make public affirmation of baptism into Christ. Let us pray. Merciful God, we thank you for these brothers and sisters whom you have made your own by water and the word in baptism. You have called us to yourself, enlightened us with the gift of your spirit, and nourished us in the community of faith. Uphold us, your servants, in the gift and promises of baptism, and unite the hearts of all whom you have brought to new birth. We ask this in the name of Christ. Amen. I ask you to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You have made public profession of your faith. Do you intend to continue in the covenant God made with you in holy baptism, to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth? I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for one another in your life in Christ? We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. Now, as an aside, I don't really care to do this, but <laughs> it is a tradition here at Trinity, so I will do this very lightly I'm just going to do each section once. I'm not going to walk up and down the aisle. So I would invite you, though, if you feel compelled and wanting to do something, you could come up to the font after the service and dip your fingers in the water yourself and cross yourself if you'd like. But this is just a symbol of our affirmation. Remember that you are a child of God. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit you give us new birth. Cleanse us from sin and raise us to eternal life. Stir up in us, your people, the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence both now and forever. Amen. Please join us in singing the next hymn, Crashing Waters of Creation. Crashing waters of creation, ordered by the Spirit's breath. Oh, mm -hmm. 
during worship, even taking some quiet time to listen for God's voice. It is a way of showing our passion for God. Other times in worship and our lives, responding passionately to God might look different. Today, today we take time to reflect on Jesus, the baptized and the baptizer, who is always with us and loves us. I invite you to take a deep breath. Let go of distractions in your mind and heart. Open yourself to the stillness and rest in God's presence. We are here to give praise and thanks to Jesus who dispels the dark and lightens every load. Please stand if you are able. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the church, the world, and all that God has made. Holy God, by the Holy Spirit, you gather your church and send it out in mission to share the good news of Jesus. Inspire your faithful people to be fervent in prayer and service, that all people know they are precious in God's sight. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, you reveal your love and power through water and the spirit. Guard rivers, seas, and all bodies of water from destruction and pollution. Secure access to clean water for all and protect the land from drought and flood. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, you protect us through the storms, fires, and troubled waters of this life. Assure us that you are with us and help us in our illness, despair, fear, pain, loneliness, and weakness. Comfort all who are in need of healing in mind, body, and spirit, especially Leah, Carolyn, Marie, Mary, Nancy, Gladys, Ella, Mimi and Gus, Gurley and Paul, Ginger and Ray and those we now name in the silence of our hearts. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, we are all joined in baptism to Christ and to one another. Bless those who are newly baptized and those who are preparing for baptism Help us to be faithful in fellowship, worship, evangelism, and service. God of grace, hear our prayer. Holy God, you, cre you, you created each of us in your glory. We give thanks for those you have called by name into your eternal embrace. Comfort us in grief. God of grace, hear our prayer. Since we have such a great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all our prayers to you in confidence and faith through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
everything we have, do, and are is a gift from God. God invites us to use our gifts of time, talent, money, and other blessings to love others. We join God in the work of healing our broken world. Contributions may be placed in the collection plate, mailed, or there is a donation button on the website. We pray, offering ourselves and our contributions to the glory of God. O God, receive our gifts of time, talent, and money as you receive us, like a mother receives her child, with arms open wide. Nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful service to tend to others with this same love. Through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We celebrated communion together with lessons and carols, blessing the bread and cup we share today. We shared the story of in the night in which he was betrayed, when our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper, when Jesus took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray the prayer our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Here is Jesus in the bread and cup of Holy Communion. Come and be fed. Please be seated. I invite you now to take off that top layer, that topmost layer to reveal the piece of bread. The body of Christ given for you. Now the second layer to reveal the juice, the blood of Christ shed for you. Please stand, if you are able. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. Christ Jesus, at this table you have feasted on, we, at this table we have feasted on your very life and we are strengthened for our journey. Send us forth from this banquet, nourished in body and spirit to proclaim your good news and serve others in your name. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. So I invite you to now share the peace in whatever safe manner you feel able to do. God 
God has called us by name, inviting us into new holy living in Jesus Christ. We are a people of faith and of calling. We have been baptized in Christ, and now God invites us to share and live the good news in all the world. God, the creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Our sending hymn is Love Divine, All Love to Tell. light of Christ for our broken, hurting world. Thanks be to God.